Pediatrics. Let's talk about that. Hello, future doctors. My name is Maji, the Canadian IMG. I'm here to just talk to you guys about my experience in the pediatric rotation itself, as well as uh, how I studied for the shelf, how I did in the rotation, what recommendations would I have for you guys. So, uh, the pediatric rotation. I think it's a very important rotation for every medical student because you just get a view of the other side, even if you have no, um, I don't know, uh, goal into going into anything involving the little people, the kids, the children. Um, so, the first thing about the rotation that you should know is that it can be, had, you, can, you can have very different experiences based on what type of institution you have, what type of rotation you have. So for me, my six weeks of pediatrics were divided into several portions. So the first two weeks, I spent it in the NICU, the NIICU. So in the NICU, what you're going to realize is that it's mainly, um, you know, very preemie babies that need uh, nutritional support, fluid support. And that is a lot of just calculations where you, can, you have to calculate, oh, this baby is this many pounds or is taking this much. How much do we need to give them to make them feel better? Um, and if that's something that you like, maybe that's for you. There's also a lot of procedures in the NICU compared to, um, let's say, um, in inpatient. So that's what we have in the NICU. Then my next week was in um, inpatient pediatrics. And at my hospital, we're not really a very... Um, busy pediatric hospital. Uh, we're mostly focused on um, adults. So, you know, we had a couple of patients every day, uh, and then we would round on mother baby floor just to check out all the new babies and see if they're doing well, or they're showing any uh, signs of jaundice or anything like that. Um, so, you know, just know your physical exam, um, check out babies, I guess. And you can, you're gonna see maybe some cases of type one diabetes, um, newly uh, found in children, or just some kids coming in because of RSV during the flu season or in the cold. Um, some ear pain, maybe they're vomiting, maybe they ingested something. I did have one of those. So, you know, it can be very different, but it can also be very slow depending on where you are. And I think the most important part that I think it should be about the same in every place is the outpatient portion of pediatrics. So with the outpatient portion, what uh, you're going to see is that we're going to have a lot of well, well child checks uh, where you're going to have to just check the develop developmental milestones of the children, two months, six months, four months, you know, 12 months. Um, are they walking? Are they doing this? Can they grasp? Can they do a pincer grasp? Um, can they make a circle? All those different types of things that you're going to ask the mom or maybe if the kid is old enough, you can just ask the kid. Uh, what else you want to know about that? You're going to need to know about vaccinations. So your office could have uh, those vaccination charts that you could memorize and be prepared for your attending. The other important thing about both uh, outpatient as well as just in general is knowing lab values for different children. Um, so different age ranges have, might have different uh, normal ranges for different lab values for electrolytes even. So that's going to be important. That's especially important for the NICU. And then finally, um, what I would recommend for outpatient is obviously having useful items like this or, you know, a little friend like uh, Mr. Monkey over here just to help you out with the children and the parents um, so you can keep them busy. Or maybe you can have some things on your phone or a little flashlight uh, just to keep them, uh, just to keep the babies happy. And just... Uh, perfect your physical exam because you're going to be looking a lot of ears and you're going to be doing a lot of hip clicks and checking everything out. All right. Next up, the shelf. So for the shelf, um, I use very few resources, mainly three resources. Um, if you want to add another four, that's up to you. I did you roll first, or technically, uh, I did AMBOSS first. So the AMBOSS section for pediatrics, I did all that. Then I went to the you roll. And I did all the U world for pediatrics, and then I did Zanki. But I, mostly Zanki, I used it to memorize all the milestones as well as the vaccinations. And then after that, you can kind of let go of it. But if you really want to do well on the shelf, or uh, you really want to prepare for step two CK, then you can go, obviously go ahead and learn um, do all the flashcards for that. But what I definitely do recommend Amos um, as a good uh, resource. Now the other fourth resource that you can add is obviously 
online med ed and everybody really loves that resource. Personally, I, I don't really find it the video is that much helpful but if somebody if that's something that you like where somebody has to walk you through it and Dr. Dustin is definitely a good teacher uh, that can help you out then yeah go ahead uh, and then the other thing there are some textbooks that people recommend like I think blueprint and uh, case files I guess but personally those just put me to sleep so I wouldn't I wouldn't personally recommend it to anybody all right so that was the rotation itself and then we had the shelf Definitely look into some little items to help you out in the rotation. Obviously, Mr. Monk is a little bit too big for that. But uh, if you have some other things, maybe definitely some good apps on your phone. Um, and I think you guys should all do well. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments or message me directly. Um, either to my email account, um, Facebook, anything. Or if you just see me in the hospital and you want to ask a question. Alright, those were my tips and recommendations and I hope you guys all do well.